welcome back to another YouTube video. Today I'm showing you guys my updated makeup routine that I've been doing in all of my recent vlogs. I've been using some new products so I'm really excited to share those with you guys. My next video is going to be, I'm actually starting a vlog today so I'm going to film a little weekend vlog. I have a few friends coming into town. I'm going to upload a vlog probably on like Tuesday. Um, but getting this makeup video up first. I'm also in my new bathroom that's almost done. It's not completely done yet. Details were painted on the floor of the bathroom today, but it's really coming together. I have to like put my stuff up on my shelves, um, but I'm really excited to show that with you guys. I'm gonna do a bathroom and bedroom tour on my vlog that I'm gonna upload next. Before I get into this makeup look, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Kenzie. So what Kenzie is, is a, an IPL hair removal device. So I already have one opened, but they sent me another one. I wanna show you guys the packaging and what you will receive if you buy this product. I love this product because it's really hard for me to, to get hair laser removal done because I'm never here and you kind of have to book in advance and I find myself not really wanting to do beauty appointments when I'm home. At the time that I'm home, I feel like I've been really busy. So it comes with this little guide to help you guys along. It's literally so easy to travel with. I'm really into the fact that a lot of these brands are making products that you normally would have had to go to a beauty spa for and now you can do it at home. So it has cooling technology, which I really like. I'm really excited to be partnering with Kenzie because I actually saw another YouTuber make a video about this product. And then I've been using it now for two months about, um, so I could really see results before I made the video. So now I'm just doing my legs right now. Like that's the area that I'm working on. Doing it on my legs has been such a game changer because I literally don't have to shave my legs that often anymore. And the hair is just like thinner now. I swear to God, the hair is growing in like blonde. It's thin and just like really easy and manageable. So yeah, I just really wanted to share with you guys this product and leave you guys a link and a code. I do a lot of collaborations now Nowadays that I feel like I don't have a code for but I always get so excited when I actually have a code for you guys that You guys can get a discount on the products that you want to try that you see me using So very simple go to kenzie.com and use my code page for 20% off your order I saw results in two weeks full results take 12 which honestly is not bad at all if you're consistent with it But I literally saw results in two weeks and I've naturally brown hair. Yeah, I love this product I know that you guys will love it too. So thank you so much Kenzie for sponsoring this video. Okay, now I'm gonna get into the makeup part and I'm gonna be answering some of your guys' questions throughout the video. I am really, really excited to be making an updated makeup tutorial for you guys. I love makeup a lot. And when I originally started my YouTube channel, like I really wanted to be doing a lot of beauty content and I just really haven't. But I wanna be doing a lot more makeup videos, especially since I've redone my bathroom. I'm also gonna be answering some questions in this video. I asked you guys questions on Instagram, so I'm gonna answer those. So the first step, always to my makeup routine is warming up the base of my skin. So whether I use the Drunk Elephant Drops or I use this Charlotte Tilbury color, this is definitely like, I don't wanna say orange and it looks sort of orange right now, but when I put my foundation over it, it, it just really makes my skin glow from within underneath my foundation. I've always been using the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter underneath my foundation, but I actually had a makeup artist use this color in particular, which is pretty dark, and she used it, and then I realized how amazing my makeup looked, and it lasted longer. Next, I'm gonna go in with the Kosas foundation in medium tan olive. So I just buff this into the skin with my big foundation brush. Now, depending on the foundation that I use, I'll switch between a brush and a beauty sponge. I think that for this foundation, I prefer a brush. I really prefer a sponge if it's a super matte foundation that dries down quicker. Someone asked, how do you find and stick to an aesthetic? That's a good question. People really wanna put you in a box. You can even put yourself in a box. And I think your lifestyle and the clothes that make you happy and feel confident should dictate your aesthetic. Do not be scared to be more than one thing. You're allowed to go to a tennis match and dress up and be classier and, and dress more eloquently and then you're allowed to go to the barn and wear cowboy boots and camo. Like no one said that you can't and anyone criticizing you or saying that you can't is 
insecure. Say, for example, like my aesthetic has changed a little bit since moving to Connecticut because my life is different, right? Like I'm riding, I'm spending more time outside, I'm much more casual, but then when I'm on the road, my aesthetic is a little different because I'm on the road, I'm going to tennis matches. So I think that trying really hard to fit into one box in life is hard. So yeah, don't get too caught up in like aesthetic or even really viral trends, right? Like draw inspiration from things, but picking up pieces along the way from inspiration and from certain aesthetics is fine. But if you don't like your current style, don't focus on an aesthetic if that makes sense because i also think that aesthetics can be like a little bit unrealistic for example we have the sophia ritchie aesthetic old money aesthetic that's very trendy right now sophia ritchie is not always dressed like that like it's not a realistic thing and i think that sometimes maybe influencers will make you think that that is their entire wardrobe but i promise you that it's not so on the base of my eyes i'm using this rose ink and capri cream bronzer I absolutely love this. I've, I've been using this as a base for my eyeshadow for months now in all my past vlogs. And I actually bring it down on my nose as well for my nose contour. It's just such a pretty base color. And then I'm actually going to bring some down in my contour to just kind of like make all the colors come together. Someone asked what I asked for when I get my hair colored. So I've been on a bit of a hair journey, especially recently. I decided that... And I think this is just maybe part of getting older that my hair white blonde just didn't look very good. I just didn't think it looked very good. I think that when photos are edited and when you're full glam, that white platinum hair can look good. But I feel like daily it didn't look super healthy and good. I also am pretty tan naturally, especially in the summer. I definitely can get very pale, but I can get quite tan and I've stayed quite tan. And I just feel like this hair color is so much more flattering on me. So I've been honestly letting my natural hair color grow out and not highlighting my hair as much. My hair has grown so much and I just feel like this is the best that my hair has ever looked color wise. So just like living in my natural color, becoming comfortable with my natural color, that's been hard because my hair was literally like white, but yeah. Oh, also guys, this is my absolute favorite. My good friend and makeup artist Cam Artistry showed me these, the Brow Trio by Valentino. I would say that for the majority, like luxury brands, maybe besides Dior, makeup isn't really worth it, but this product is so good. I also use it as eyeliner. Um really good and this lasts a long time so that's what i use on my eyebrows how do you find inner peace and self love before i answer that i'm just going to show you guys quickly what i do next up on my eyes so i use this mac paint pot and it's fabstract i didn't even know it was called that but it's this chocolatey cooler brown tone and this stuff guys lasts so long so this is a look that I've been wearing to a lot of matches recently. I just want an eyeshadow and an eye that will last a long time. I go in with this Tarte Quick Stick Matte Tan Brown Liner. And I'm just going to kind of bring my eyes out. So I just add a bit right here to my eye. And it's kind of messy, but I'm going to go over it with a brush. So I'm just going to go like this the goal of this liner is not for it to be super cat eye -y. it's really actually to like kind of sh change the shape of my eye so once i do the first layer of that i kind of just go over it with a brush and i'm gonna go over it one more time and then i'm gonna do my upper water line this even further creates the illusion my eyes are a little bit like skinnier smaller then i always always will set my eyeliner with a powder this is the new kosas powder that they sent me and then i'm going to take a little bit of the powder and just hit my inner lash line a little bit okay cute now i'm just gonna put on some lip liner okay back to the question that was asked so i actually answered this question in an interview that i did two days ago the conversation was actually more about my business and then it sort of naturally led to this conversation that was about that i feel like i've found inner peace 
with myself and true confidence. What it really comes down to is building a life for yourself. I think that especially women, we have this idea of like, okay, I'm gonna get married, I'll have a job, but like my priority is to get married and have kids. And, and to be honest with you guys, that was always sort of like what I wanted and what I thought was gonna make me really happy. This is just me personally. I thought that having a house and having kids and having a dog and all of those things that we think of when we think of someone that might have like a perfect life. And I very quickly realized that for myself that that actually wasn't what was gonna fulfill me. And when I started building something and pouring myself into my passions, and into projects and into my hobbies, that's when I got really confident. So finding things and doing things that don't rely on someone else, that don't rely on your parents, that don't rely on your boyfriend, that, that don't rely on you building a family with someone. Like I've built things that regardless of anyone, I'm really solid. So I think that through social media, through, through what we think is the ideal perfect life, you can kind of get lost. Okay, what's the question? How do you find inner peace and self-love? I said through like independence and having your own hobbies and your own work and your own thing. Yeah, I would say like for you, I think it's like nature and horses and like simple like things, things and stuff. Yeah. Like what for you? your pumpkin friends, horses, like animals in general. Like just yeah. good things, like yeah. good simple things. Yeah. I agree. My life now, it was not like this before, but my life now doesn't rely on anyone else's life. I get a lot of questions about like how I deal with Tommy's losses or, you know, do I get down or do I get nervous? And I've gotten a lot of questions about that in general in this Q&A and I think that's a great question because tennis is so, such an emotional investment. It's an individual sport. There are only two guys out there and they're pouring, you know, everything into the matches and there's only one winner every week and it's just a very intense emotional sport. So I totally understand that question. Like for me, going to all of these matches and obviously wanting him to do well. Honestly guys, that I'm able to support Tommy in the best way that I can because I'm in a good place. Because of one, I think that these tennis players really need consistency in their life. They live on the road and every single week is a new tournament. So they kind of have to have a mentality of like, okay, I lost this match, but I have another tournament in like four days. So like forgetting a bad loss or forgetting a heartbreaking loss and moving on quickly is really important. But in my eyes, for me, it's more just like, I, I need to hug, love and support Tommy the same way, whether he wins or he loses, because that's what's going to make me the best partner for him. And that's what's going to make me support his career long term and in the long run. Tommy's had some matches that he's lost that have been so heartbreaking and so hard and then he's gone to final a tournament the next week. I think showing up for him and being consistent and being a really supportive partner. If you guys pause, this Lush by Dior is literally my absolute favorite. I got asked so many questions in my US Open vlogs about this blush. It is the Rosy Glow by Dior, my new favorite. So I'm really excited to show you guys in this video. Also, I use the Huda Beauty mascara. It's one of my favorites. Definitely get nervous, um, but I have a really good relationship with tennis and, and with all of it because I think I would go crazy if I didn't. I totally understand if people like would be like, oh, I could never do that. I could never watch that many matches because of how nerve wracking it is. Okay, something new I've been doing recently is adding this Dior highlighter. This is Dior Backstage, their highlighter palette, but I've been using this champagne color on my inner corner and actually on my lid. Since I put down such a solid brown base, this isn't gonna turn white or anything. It's just gonna like kind of become part of the brown. I feel like a lot of my photos have actually been turning out better because I've added this detail. I feel like it makes the makeup look like fresher and a little bit brighter. And then I just highlight my nose a little bit. This was kind of like an old trend of like adding the glitter to the inner corner, but since this is like not super glittery, I really like this. Tips on horseback riding. I want to start and don't know where to begin. Okay, now for my lip color. I just use the shade by Sephora 
light brown let me find it and i kind of just use this like all over to create a kind of base for my lip color light brown by sephora i've been using this color since toronto and i've been absolutely loving it and then by rose ink i'm gonna use the shade ever loved it's this really gorgeous pink color i love this liquid lip by them it's just really soft you guys know i love a matte pink lip and i think adding a sort of brown lip liner underneath it makes it look pretty so i completely understand that question and i think that the horse world is so judgy and so tough whether you're a beginner or whether you've been riding your whole life people are really judgy which is a really unfortunate part of that community but luckily it doesn't matter what anyone else says especially about riding the sport is literally about the animal it's literally about loving on the horse that you're riding and developing a bond with the animals and my advice would be to start in a lesson program there is so much to learn about horses always i grew up next to a riding barn and my neighbors had horses and every time i ride I learned something. I got back into riding during COVID and I just started taking lessons and I still love working with a trainer still um, and I still feel like I'm learning but I totally understand. But I understand how it seems like a really hard sport to get into because it is quite an expensive sport. Obviously owning a horse is very expensive so I would say just um, look for a lesson bar near you. There are lesson barns all across the country so yeah. Okay guys, I'm done with my makeup now, so I think I'm just gonna answer some questions to just wrap this video up. Someone asked how to accept being, quote, the villain in friendships even though you've done your best and didn't do anything wrong. Oh, I would say that personally, whenever I've had that happen to me, you kind of need to be empathetic towards the person that you're dealing with because honestly, in my life, really not often at all but when it has happened i just really know that the person that i'm dealing with is in a place that is one bad they're in a bad place but also they're in a place where they are completely incapable of understanding what actually happened the role they actually played and just general self-awareness and i think that people who will label you as the villain and are kind of making you out to be the bad guy. You just have to understand that that's coming from a place of hurt and insecurity because ultimately things happen, whether it's work relationships, friendship relationships, romantic relationships, breakups, things happen, people don't click, people don't get along. So okay to naturally grow apart from people and anyone who is saying that you're the villain or if you're this horrible person and you actually aren't and didn't do anything to this person, I think that you have to know that if that person was good and evolved, they would just be like, yeah, it didn't work out. You know, like our friendship just didn't work out. I think that it just goes back to that hurt people hurt people. I think that in relationships in your teens and in your 20s, you'll have people at such different stages. And I'm 25 and I feel like I've met a lot of 25, 26 year olds that are actually like still in their teens. It's a really interesting age because some people I think are adults and some people are busy and working hard and working on themselves and and working on themselves spiritually and I think that some people aren't there yet and aren't ready to do that yet so you just have to meet people for where they're at and not to stoop to the level it's really hard sometimes and I know that it's really hard sometimes but just because that person is saying things and doing things about you doesn't mean that you need to react or say nasty things back um, but yeah that's like a really tricky thing you know, in your 20s, meeting people that you expect are going to be able to communicate and be adults, and they're just not, um, and they're just not there. Someone asked how much time I'll be spending in Florida, and honestly, I'm not really sure yet. Definitely a majority of the winter, I would say. A majority of the winter, yeah. And even not in the winter, I'm going to be there a lot. It's a really easy flight from Connecticut. Guys, Connecticut is literally the best state in the world. They're really like not nice parts of Connecticut so I think it confuses people. There are some parts of Connecticut that are like not cute and then there are some towns in Connecticut like the one that I live in that is literally like the perfect town. It's close to New York City, closer to Europe and it's really close to Florida. It's like an hour-ish flight and really cheap from here. So I'm gonna be popping back and forth. I'm really excited um, to start vlogging again at the Florida house. Um, a bunch of the furniture I got got delivered and yeah I'm excited to be there.
why are you riding navy english now so navy was trained under an english and a western saddle so he can do both he doesn't mind both right now i'm trying to implement more structure in navy's life and give him a little bit more of a routine and i feel like english riding is a lot more technique based and doing a lot of flat work stuff with him that's why i'm riding him uh, english right now but i'm going to be switching back and forth i'm probably going to be riding him in the trails western in the ring english i like both i've always ridden both but i grew up riding english but i like both a lot do you wish you moved out of new york city sooner yes I do I think I definitely overstayed my welcome in New York but I think that I have such an appreciation for here and for life in the suburbs now because I burnt it out in New York so hard so I wouldn't change the timing of anything because of where my life is now but I definitely think I have like a little bit of a bitter relationship with New York because I left hating it dealing with insecurities nose ears especially if you vlog see pics of yourself i totally understand this i'm so used to being in front of the camera now that i just have kind of like i feel like it's helped me get over insecurities like i was more insecure i think when i was only uploading instagram photos and like editing them a lot like over editing my photos because i would only shoot photos from a certain angle which i still do like obviously instagram is massively a highlight reel i get my hair and makeup done i shoot a lot of my content on like really good cameras picking the best photo out of a hundred i do wear makeup in my vlogs sometimes sometimes i don't but you're really seeing my face and like me move from different angles so like it's just more real like but i honestly feel like the beginning might be kind of tough if you're not used to being on camera and you're not used to seeing yourself from certain angles but you kind of just grow to realize that i don't know if this is through like me just like being a happier person and being more confident in general but like you just learn that like that's just you and it's all good um and i would say that when i was younger i had smaller lips which is why i got lip filler can you talk about the whole process of designing your collections congratulations on everything that is so sweet thank you so i work with a designer and, and someone who can basically do like digital they're called cads but like digital fashion drawings and mock up the ideas that i have so we have meetings and brainstorming meetings i say that i want something i said i wanted a sand-ish white camo with a butterfly in it a more modern feminine camo explains them all the things that i wanted and then i work with my designer on making this product come to life so it's a collaborative process and i have an amazing designer i contract her basically for her services which is a designer and really great and that's kind of like the design process i would say that i just have like brainstorming kind of like creative brain dump meetings i come with mood boards and color palettes and inspiration and then we kind of create a product and make a product into something that we can send to manufacturers to have the products made. Biggest advice for someone in their early 20s post-grad with no life plan. There's that quote or saying that's like, pick an industry, don't pick a job, which I really, really like. I would say if I were to like not have the job that I have and if I were to have to do it all over again, and this is what I did, but maybe I would do it a little bit more extremely, but I would, again do things that i loved be around people that made me feel good really try to set aside time for your hobbies and then be around like-minded people because i think that you'll fall into what you're supposed to be doing as long as you are doing things that you love around people that you love and I, I think that there is a way to make a living off of doing pretty much anything now like on the weekends maybe instead of going out you prioritize at least like one day one or two days out of the week to picking up a hobby or picking up a sport or picking up a craft is dairy boy hiring do you have plans to expand so right at this moment we've kind of like hired people and contracted people so our team is bigger than it looks i think sometimes i have my core people but we have a lot of people that we've contracted so we've hired them for their services but they're not necessarily like a part of the team although they are sort of a part of the team it's just like in a different way I think that in three months, Dairy Boy is going to be hiring one person and then we're going to hire one intern. So when that happens, I'm going to post about it and like give everyone the opportunity to apply if they want to apply. Oh, how do you get so much done in a day? You are just the like, 
the queen of multitasking. Yeah. Like a million Different things, things at once. I would say having a to and list. To yeah, list. To do list. To do list. <laughs> I think having to do lists. My management sends me a to-do list every morning of ads I need to film and things that are due and things I need to sign and review and go over. So from my management side on like the Paige Lorenz Instagram side or social media side, I get a to-do list every morning around nine. Olivia on the Dairy Boy side makes me a to-do list and then like we just have things that we need to get on. So yeah, I'm a big list person um, and I have a calendar that I use regularly and update regularly. People were also asking about what cameras you use, which I always, I'm so intrigued about. You are? Cameras are so cool to me. They like are. Like foreign. Yeah. yeah. This is a Canon G7X that I'm vlogging on. This is really good for vlogging and for like flash photography. And then I use the Canon Rebel, what is it? The Canon Rebel, I'll link it. For my B-roll and like my high quality vlog stuff is my... Canon Rebel. That's what it. brand are your black riding boots? What black brand are they? I don't De Niro's. Know. De Niro's. Slay. They are the best. They're cute. They're. I think those are the best boots. Tall boots. Really? You can get truly. Yeah. I just feel like the leather keeps up so much better. True. And as far as like a luxury riding boot, riding boot, they're very reasonable. reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever you, whenever you go into the tall boot era, it's. Right. Very much. What would you say is the most unreasonable riding boot brand? Like Hermes? I would say, I would say Parlanti. Don't get me wrong, I love a Parlanti. I think <laughs> they look so sleek and beautiful. But all of my friends. That have them? Everything, like zippers are breaking. The